Did you know that at one point, Green Lantern was arguably shaping up to be the most popular DC character? It's hard to imagine, mainly because Batman and Superman are so insanely recognizable. They are not only DC's most famous characters, but two of the most famous fictional characters in general. However, back during the 2000s and early 2010s, you'd be surprised with just how popular Green Lantern was becoming. So popular in fact, that DC even made a movie and an entire animated show adapting the character's world. The Green Lantern mythos and their popularity were catapulted after a really successful 2003 miniseries called Green Lantern Rebirth, a miniseries that kicked off a run by writer Jeff Johns that introduced a lot of new elements into their world which were really well received by fans, and DC started to gradually publish more and more Green Lantern books. Just as an example, back in 2011 when DC made their highly publicized New 52 relaunch, a lot of their new books were Green Lantern books. In total, DC was publishing 4 Green Lantern books per month and sometimes even more, but nowadays, given the character's decline in popularity, DC is only publishing 0 Green Lantern books per month, nothing. As of me recording this, DC hasn't published a new Green Lantern focused book in months. And only later on, in April 2023, will we see a couple new ongoing Green Lantern titles. That really shows just how much Green Lantern has fallen in popularity. But it wasn't due to lack of trying in DC's part, as we can see. They were really promoting them in the comics, and even beyond that, with other media projects as well. There was a movie starring Ryan Reynolds back in 2012, and to coincide with the release of the film, they also made what is in my opinion one of the greatest action cartoons from the 2010s, Green Lantern the Animated Series. This truly is one of the best superhero cartoons ever made honestly. It had great character development, amazing action, very engaging writing and also some absolutely fantastic world building which I'm pretty amazed they managed to do so well, because the Green Lantern mythos is some of the most extensive and deep lore in all of DC Comics, so to successfully adapt their world is an amazing feat, and to this day, it stands as the best adaptation of Green Lantern outside the comics in my opinion. Even though the show was highly regarded by those who watched it, unfortunately, it was still cancelled by Cartoon Network in 2013 alongside Young Justice, which was also airing at the time. This obviously didn't really go well with fans, and in the years following the cancellation, many fans made petitions to bring both shows back, and later on in 2019, surprisingly, it was announced that Young Justice would be revived for a new season on HBO Max. But sadly, Green Lantern didn't have that much luck. While the animated series still remains as a fan favorite to this day, Young Justice was always the more popular show out of the two, and the one which had most chances of a revival. But fans of Green Lantern will always hold out hope that the series will also be revived one day, and until then, we can only speculate on what a potential season 2 of the show could possibly be about. The show set up many future plot lines, which surely would have been amazing to see. The biggest loose end the series had was the cliffhanger of the very last episode, where we see the Red Lantern Razor go off to explore the universe, searching for Aya, after she was defeated and separated from the Anti-Monitor, and we see a Blue Lantern ring follow behind him. Razor's character development, from a resentful and dangerous Red Lantern to gradually becoming a more balanced and caring person, is really one of the greatest aspects of the show, and his character arc culminating in him becoming a Blue Lantern always seemed like a fitting evolution for him. After the show ended, we even got to see this concept art made by one of the show's artists that shows how he would have looked like. But even more major than that is the surprise appearance of Razor in the fourth season of Young Justice. Yep, even though Young Justice was the only show revived, they included a sort of continuation of Razor's story in their show. In episode 19 of season 4, they introduced Razor as a blue and red lantern hybrid who was still searching the universe for Aya, and the episode was even written by Giancarlo Volpi, the showrunner of Green Lantern the Animated Series. After the episode aired, the writers behind Young Justice went on to clarify that Young Justice and Green Lantern the Animated Series don't really share a continuity or are set in the same universe. The Razor that appeared in Young Justice was another iteration of the character, who went through similar experiences as the Razor from the Animated Series.
Another character that would have been featured in season 2 of the show, and who was also set up in the last episode, was Green Lantern Jon Stewart, who is mentioned by Guy Gardner, where he states that Jon is the current Lantern that is protecting Sector 2814, while Hal Jordan and Guy are away in deep space, dealing with the Anti-Monitor and the Manhunters. Jon Stewart is an amazing character, and it would have been awesome to see him on the show, and see more Lanterns from Earth get adapted, but the show actually hinted at yet another human Green Lantern. In episode 16, we are introduced to an alternate steampunk universe, and we actually meet a steampunk lantern created just for the show. This original character also mentions to Hal Jordan that he isn't the first Green Lantern he meets. I modeled myself after a bloke who saved our entire planet, called himself Green Lantern. Proper hero he was, wore a red shirt and a cape. While this mention was most likely just a little easter egg, it's still entirely possible that if the show would have continued, we might have gotten to see the OG Green Lantern, Alan Scott, appear on the show, and I would have loved that. And Giancarlo Volpi has also mentioned that season 2 would have included Sinestro's heel turn and transformation into a villain, and there would have been a plot where Sinestro frames Hal Jordan for the crimes that he committed and tries to get him imprisoned. The episode from season 1 which focused on Sinestro already heavily hinted at Sinestro's evil nature, and we saw in multiple episodes how yellow energy contained the power of fear, so it's safe to assume that Sinestro possibly would have gotten his yellow ring and started the Sinestro core. Everything we've touched on up until now were plot threads which were clearly setups for future season 2 storylines. But now, I'd like to briefly speculate a bit and talk about some other aspects of the Green Lantern comics which might have been explored on the show. For example, in episode 26, we get to see the Book of Oa, which in the GL mythos, the book has a forbidden chapter that prophesizes the Blackest Night, an event which will unleash destruction on the universe caused by a powerful death entity called Necron commanding a horde of corpses reanimated by rings and who serve as his Black Lantern core. In the comics, the Blackest Night event was insane, and its main gimmick was bringing heroes and villains who were currently dead in the comics back to life as zombified Black Lanterns. So if the animated series would have continued and they decided to adapt this storyline, they could have used it to bring back to life dead characters from the show. It might have been a bit too dark for the series to adapt, but they could have found a way to tone it down. Beyond that, I also think it's fun to think about how they could have expanded the show's world into the larger DC universe by showcasing other DC heroes. For instance, in episode 11, the show introduced Thanagarians into its world. So who knows? Maybe we could have seen Hawkman, or the planet Ran, and Adam Strange. That would have been really, really cool. It's clear that the show never got to reach its full potential, and that its creators had a lot of ambition with what they wanted to do with the show, and what they got to do in the time before it was cancelled. Just by looking and comparing the series to the comics, it's obvious that they had a lot of respect and appreciation for the original source material we could have gotten to see a multi-season animated space opera. It could have been the deepest exploration of DC's cosmic side ever adapted outside the comics. And while unfortunately, we never got to see the show's potential be realized, I am still really grateful that the show was even made in the first place, and we at least got one season comprised of 26 great episodes filled with engaging storylines, amazing world building, and some really compelling characters. And if the day finally comes and the show finally gets revived for a new season, I will be there and I will be very, very happy.